I'll uh, continue from where we left the last time. So we are looking at some of the back testing techniques for value at risk and uh, basically we divided everything into two parts. Uh, one part is understanding the uh, the model that we have which is known as QPEC uh, model which is used to determine uh, accept or reject uh, of tail points and uh, we saw that we have the uh, log likelihood ratio which was based on uh, PTN and uh, based on that uh, uh, P was the probability of exception uh, which was equal to 1 minus confidence level so that was P and T and N were like uh, the dates where N represent total number of exceptions and T represent uh, uh, the number of samples and N by N, N by T was the failure rate so all in all it was like uh, if we talked about 97.5% confidence interval and we thought that 2.5% or 2.5% 2 of 255 days which is 6.3 days and we decided that uh, we'll go in a 6.3 days and then we calculated uh, the LR and uh, we saw that uh, the LR uh, we could not reject if uh, our exceptions uh, are between like uh, 2 and 12 so if it goes beyond 2 and 12 then uh, we should think that something is wrong with our model and this was based on Cupic uh, on how to uh, build up whether uh, uh, this thing is working or not so that, that was a, uh, uh, a statistical way to look at things and we were rejecting things uh, um, if we got like two exceptions then uh, uh, the LR would become uh, 7.16 which was unacceptable and our uh, limit was 3.84 for rejecting so uh, till the time uh, we are between 2 and 12 it's fine with us and uh, that's how uh, we were given a chart now when we move to the uh, other area and we look at the Basel committee rules for back testing then we'll see that um, in that back testing process we attempt uh, to strike a balance between probability of uh, type 1 and type 2 error the Basel committee requires market war to be calculated at 99% confidence level and back tested over the past year at the 99% confidence level we expect 2.5 exceptions or uh, it's it's calculated from 255 into uh, 1% so in order to compensate for the inaccurate model the community established a scale of number of exception and corresponding increase in capital multiplier as uh, number of exception and corresponding uh, increase in the capital multiplier happens uh, we'll see that uh, uh, we'll be more conservative so uh, the multiplier approach uh, is normally three but can be increased to as much as four based on the accuracy of the bank's war so it was uh, there was a chart of penalty zones where green was uh, between zero to four where multiplier was three then yellow was five to nine where the multiplier was uh, from 3.4 to 4 3.85 and red was like 10 and more and the multiplier was four so that, that was the uh, multiplier effect and uh, we generally tested it uh, at a confidence interval of 99% for uh, for one year so 2.5 exceptions uh, each year or 2.5 days each year we were allowed to breach uh, the model and uh, k was the multiplier in the uh, in the capital or it is known as the capital multiplier so th th that was it uh, for the Basel norms uh, that we were looking at and uh, the zone is quite broad because we had green yellow and red uh, with us and there were different penalty of five to nine exceptions in the subject so committee established a four arrangement of causes for exception and guidance for supervisor and basic integrity of the model is lacking uh, we have to check for that then we have to check for model accuracy uh, if model accuracy needs improvement intraday trading activity and bad luck so that was it now uh, regulators are more concerned about uh, type 2 error since inaccurate models uh, would have five errors uh, and uh, uh, th that's where things uh, become interesting so industry analysts have suggested lowering the required war 
uh, confidence to 95 and compensate uh, by using a greater multiplier that would result in a greater number of exceptions for children and variance uh, would be statistically significant. Uh, the one year exception rate in 95 would be 13 uh, with more than 17 the p uh, probability of type 1 error would be 12.5 but uh, the probability of type 2 error would fall to 7.4. So. Uh, uh, that's how we can uh, that's how uh, there are two levels to uh, go for but uh, the, the current uh, rate that we'll check uh, is 99% uh, confidence interle interne uh, level now we move to the uh, condition conditional coverage uh, part and it's uh, necessary to consider conditional coverage in the back testing framework uh, in the conditional coverage the timing of our exceptions uh, uh, are considered which was not considered before so that's why the name conditional has come into and in addition to having a predictable number of exceptions we also anticipate the exceptions to be fairly equally distributed along the time period a bunch of exception may indicate that market correlation has changed or that our reading position have altered we uh, need some guidance to determine if the bunching is random or caused by these changes by including a measure of independence of exception we measure conditional coverage of the model uh, Christopherson proposed uh, extending the unconditional coverage test to allow for potential time variation and he developed a statistic to determine serial independence of deviation in log likelihood error and the overall log likelihood test statistic uh, that he developed is like LR uh, UC and LR IND and he would reject uh, the model if LR CC which is the sum of both of them is greater than 5.5 so if the exceptions are determined to be serially independent then the model needs to be revisited to incorporate the correlation that are evident in the current condition. So th th that was uh, regarding the conditional coverage where timing also came into play and uh, there were two parameters. Uh, one was the LRUC uh, and the LRIND. So uh, uh, the LRCC or the conditional coverage uh, was the sum of both of them. Thank you.